the Workforce Connections podcast, where we discuss workforce development in Southern Nevada. Here's your host. Hi, and welcome to the WC podcast, where we explore workforce development issues in Southern Nevada. Today, we have a very special guest, a member of the Workforce Connections Local Elected Officials Consortium, one of my eight bosses, Commissioner Varlin Higby from Lincoln County. Welcome to the podcast. Glad to be here. Thank you. So, you know, you just finished your two-year term as our chair of the LEO Consortium. And during that time, boy, lots of stuff happened, good and bad. Yeah. What have you most enjoyed about those, for those two years as the chair of our body? Uh, probably the association with the people, the staff, and the people that work here and the other commissioners. The trip to D.C. has been was probably the highlight of it. Uh, and then COVID hit, and of course we didn't go anywhere for a year. But uh, we all our meetings resumed, which was kind of a challenge. But uh, you know we made it through it, and it was just a, a good experience as chair of an organization like this, and mostly because of the staff. The staff is great. You 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 and your people put together a program, different programs that you know we got some national recognition for those programs, and so you know. That makes me look good as chairman, too. <laughs> we, but it's all you guys. It's all you. We just approve what you were doing and, and appreciate all you've done. Well, that's important, Commissioner Higby. We feel supported as a staff. Uh, I would like to thank you for those, not just those two years. You've been on our board for a long time now. But during during those two years, there was, of course, the best of times, the, the national recognition, uh, yeah. winning the Super Bowl or the, the, the award amongst 550 of our peers. But we, there was also tough decisions that had to be made during those times. And you were right there in the line of fire along with your peers, uh, taking criticism for what turned out to be we, we were making the right decisions because our success shows it. So we really appreciate you. Uh, tell us a little bit about the county that you represent, Lincoln County. Tell us about its population, its geography, the industries in there. Sure. Uh, Lincoln County is about 11,000 square miles. It's the seventh largest county in the nation. Uh, population, give or take 5,000. Sometimes it's 5,200. The last census says we're actually below that, but I don't think the census because of COVID was done correctly. Uh, we have five five state parks, uh, the largest federal wildlife reserve in the nation, and I guess it's a two two endow uh, facilities too refuges. So it's a, we're pretty proud of our county, our our logistics, our people, or uh, the jobs that are there. Mostly natural resource based industries, some mining and ranching and farming, and and then there's the folks, of course, that work at the test Se site, <laughs> the secret test site, or whatever you want to call it. Yes, <laughs> but yeah, we're pretty proud of our little county. Very good. And, you know, I have a, uh, a little roaster that I like to take out for drive sometimes, and uh, I like to go to Valley of Fire. And, but I've heard that in your county there are some beautiful scenic drives that I haven't been to yet. But can you tell me about those mountains? One time you mentioned to me if you want to take a beautiful drive, you say there's these mountains around there in Lincoln County that's, that we got to visit. Oh, well, absolutely. There's, if you drive up Cane Spring, drive slow. I wouldn't take your roadster up it. You better take a pickup. Okay. <laughs> because it's a dirt road, but you, once you get over up the dirt road and then into Rainbow Canyon, it's gorgeous. The colored rocks, and especially this time of year where the fall colors are all coming, the red and the yellows and the oranges, and it's gorgeous up that canyon. The creek runs down through it to Caliante, and, and then once you get past Caliante, there's, uh, like I say, there's the five state parks. There's Kershaw Ryan, and and uh, Echo and Eagle Valley and uh, Cathedral Gorge. And then, of course, the monument on the other side of the county. And our the other side, Prantigat Valley, is a beautiful drive. You drive up, come out of the desert, and kind of turns into a green oasis in the middle of the desert. And so it's, it's kind of a special place. It's a beautiful country. And you get off the beaten path of 93 or 318 and go out on the dirt roads and uh, – the beauty is a, is a solitude. It's a solace that can only be found a few places in the world, and it, it can be found out there because there's quiet. There's not even bugs or crickets. You don't hear anything, just solitude. 
Yeah, it is beautiful. I uh, I appreciate that you invited me up to your property and uh, being able to see that high desert. When you live in Nevada, you just don't know until you see it that that exists, that beauty up there. Uh, able to do a little shooting up there on your property was fun. And so tell us about how those, and we had dinner there in one of those restaurants that seems to have been there forever. Tell us about the impact of the pandemic in Lincoln, because this worldwide pandemic affected areas differently, rural areas differently than urban areas. How did it affect Lincoln County? Well, um, basically, we more or less thumbed our nose at the government and the state and the governor and said, look, this is what we're going to do in Lincoln County. And I thought we were rather successful with it because we never had any huge Amounts of COVID. We I mean there was a amount. There was always some, but it never got over as per population per capita of the five thousand people that was there. It never it never got over two one or two percent at any time. Three percent, I think, was the highest. And so we basically kept our businesses open, which most of them were necessary because there's only one grocery store in Pranic Valley, and then one grocery store on the other side of the county in Panaca, and and so we had to keep them open. We didn't have a choice. Uh, of course, the post offices, we kept the post offices open and we kept the, any businesses that wanted to be open, we made arrangements and have to give them ability to stay open with the, the personal protection equipment and the sanitizing. And, you know, there was some criteria we laid down to stay open, but we was able to save our businesses. I, I think we maybe only lost maybe one restaurant, too, and they've started back up since COVID has, has relaxed a bit. What about moving forward, Commissioner? Do you think that the pandemic has left a lasting impact on how you do things in the county, or is it going to be back to the old normal? It'll probably never be back to the old normal because times change, things change, people, the way people think change, and that's the biggest part of it. People are more conscientious of uh, who they breathe on and who they come in contact with and where they go and who they associate with, which is good and bad but i have kind of some torn emotions about that and i i would really like to see it get back to the way it was where you weren't you know afraid to go out in public and afraid to associate at a football game or a, a basketball game or because that's the highlight of rural lifestyle is the, your social events because you don't have very many of them you know and so when people get together for church or for sports events or whatever they need to be able to feel free to go there and enjoy them without restrictions. Let's hope that we can all get back to uh, that, that, that uh, enjoyment, as you said. Um, as we talked about earlier, we have received as a local, our board, our organization received national recognition last year. There's 550 boards that wish they could win this award. And <laughs> if you're one of those boards, you might have to wait 550 years, right? Half a millennium. <laughs> Thankfully, we didn't have to. And, and as you know, also, we don't intend to, to stay there complacent because you have said we need to keep rising up. And, and that's going to be our theme for our strategic planning session in January. How do we rise up the organization even further? But tell me, now that we've achieved a high level of success, what would you like to see over the next couple of years our organization uh, do best and do or succeed at? Well, uh, right now the workforce is they're having a huge workforce shortage. Now, I don't, for what reasons, you hear a lot of, they throw a lot of statistics out there, a lot of reasons, a lot of what, you know, why this and why that. But in reality, it ha you know, it has to do with wages and jobs that are close to home and jobs that you're skilled for, the skills that you're trained for. So my vision would be to find the people that want to work and make sure they have the skills that they're suited for to find the jobs that they want at a wage that is a, a wage that they would accept, is an acceptable wage to move forward. And also, I would like to see us uh, push harder for, instead of four-year colleges, there's kids that really come out of high school that really don't want to go to four-year school, and so they get out of high school and they drift for a couple of years, and maybe they work at McDonald's, maybe they, you know, trying to figure out what they want to do with their lives, but if we could get them um, in the door, we could get in the door at our, our high schools and start with them as freshmen, juniors, and seniors and get them to make some decisions like, hey, I want to I learn a skill. 
Well, so yeah, you get out of high school and you go and you learn to learn to be a heavy equipment or diesel mechanic. So you work in that field a couple of years and maybe you don't like it. All right, yeah, you can go back, come back to workforce. We'll help you retrain for something else. But the object is to keep people working. Because if people are working, our economy is. That's jobs is what drives economies. People are spending money, and that's what makes businesses thrive is when the, the consumer spends money, the businesses thrive, and businesses thrive, they hire more people, and it's just a cycle of growth. And so if, if we can promote that style of growth without huge amounts of taxpayer dollars, the money that we spend is well spent. Well, uh, Commissioner Higby, you have our word that we're going to continue as an organization to work hard to accomplish those goals that you lined out. Uh, personally, I'm uh, thankful to have you as one of my eight bosses because uh, you've been always very clear in your direction, uh, hugely supportive of me and the staff. And again, we all feel on behalf of them, I can tell you we feel lucky to have you. I know you make a long drive every time we have meetings, but you always do it. So thank you not just uh, for all of that, but thank you for being on our, pack, our podcast today as well. <laughs> it's a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Of course, you haven't asked for a raise yet, so you may not like me after you ask for Right. <laughs> Sounds good. I guess that's a topic for another day. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. So that's it for this episode of the WC Podcast. We hope to see you at the next one. Until then, stay safe. Okay, well, thank you, Barlin, for staying over for our bonus segment that we call Against the Wall. The first section is called Your Favorites. Are you ready? Sure. Roll. Tell, tell us your favorite food. That would be Prime Rib. Your favorite movie? Tombstone. Your favorite city to visit? Ah. Uh, you can give us several if you like. I really enjoyed Washington, D.C. Very good. I've been there with you. Uh, California, San Diego was fun. Um, Those are good ones. Yeah. Okay. Your favorite subject in school? Uh, and dang sure wasn't math. <laughs> Probably history and geography. Okay. Your favorite song? Ooh. Uh, can't think of the name of Randy Travis. Song. Okay. Okay. But I can't. Your favorite holiday? That had got to be Christmas. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Very good. You've made it through our first section. The second one is called <laughs> Tough Choices. <laughs> Here we go. Would you rather vacation in Nevada or another state? Other states. Is your glass half full or half empty? It's always half full. Do you rather do house chores or ranching chores? Ranching chores. <laughs> would you rather owe money or owe a favor? I would rather owe a favor. Are you an introvert or an extrovert? I'm probably an extrovert. <laughs> Here comes my favorite one. Would you rather have justice or grace? Can't have both. <laughs> <laughs> you can, I guess. I, how about being gracefully just? <laughs> there you go. That's the first time we've heard that one. Very good. Would you rather ride a horse or drive a tractor? Oh, I'm a horseback. Absolutely. Yep. Okay, that's the second section. Our last section is called Finish the Sentence. So I'm going to give you a few unfinished sentences for you to finish. Are you ready? I'm ready. If Varlin could live anywhere, it would be? In Alamo, Nevada. Varlin's favorite thing about his work is? The outdoors. The best part of living in southern Nevada is? The weather. The three words that describe Varlin are? Oh... I never, never take the time to describe myself. Probably outgoing. Yes. Loving and caring. Very good. Those are three very good ones. If Varlin could travel back in time, he would travel to? Idaho. And doing the WC podcast today was? Fun. Great. Well, thank you, Varlin, for staying over and doing our bonus segment. <laughs> <laughs>